my god, you guys. Anime is good. Anime is very, very good, and y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know because I haven't even been able to, like, clarify. I haven't even been able to put it into words because, like, I'm having, like, a second renaissance. I'm having a second renaissance of, like, adapting my tastes, of, like, understanding something new about what I appreciate about anime and seeking out shows that have that property. See, back in 2014, I had a renaissance. I got back into anime after, like, a year and a half, almost two years that I hadn't been into it, and I was just, like, catching up on what I had missed in that time that I was gone, and... It just so happened that, like, I had a firm understanding of what I was really interested in at the time. I wanted to see, like, cyberpunk shows, and I wanted to see, like, Gainax shit, you know? And so, Kill La Kill had just come out, and Psycho Pass had just come out, and I finally watched Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex for the first time. Log Horizon had just come out, and it was, like, a lot of shit relevant to my interests happened all at once, you know? And so... It really got me back into anime in a really big way. And not long after that, Shirobako came out and Hunter x Hunter 2004, you know, when I caught up to it in 2014. Um, like, all of that happening at once made me like, anime is fucking awesome. And then that just like shut off. And the reasoning, there's a lot of reasons for it. Part of it is that I started just keeping up with current shit instead of really looking back for a while. In a lot of 2015, and a lot of 2016, and a lot of 2017, like, a lot of these past few years I have been trying to keep up with current shit so that I can be a part of the conversation surrounding it. If you go back to 2014, I had a separate channel called uh, Digi Does Anime where I had the show The Anime Hype Train where I was watching all the current season shit and like trying to get back in in that way but like I was mostly watching older stuff. You know I wasn't doing analysis videos on new anime. That didn't start until a little bit later. So. You know, I transitioned into, like, trying to cover more of the new stuff. And I'm still watching old shit all the time, of course, but it's almost always for research projects. It's always like, oh, I'm gonna watch all the anime that Akiyuki Shinbo made in the 90s and do a video on that. So I would still see lots of old shit, but it was, like, always based on the parameters of, like, an analysis video. Not so much on the parameters of, like, let's just seek out a genre that I generally like or a property of anime that I am generally a huge fan of you know it was more like let's watch everything that came out in 1991 and see what was the best show but what all of these lead you down is an avenue of watching lots of mediocre anime if you're keeping up with current shit you're gonna watch a lot of mediocre garbage like just trying to even find stuff to whittle it down to like even if you're just trying to get it down to like the three best shows of the season you're gonna have to watch fucking everything because unless you agree with like someone in particular's taste like if you agree with our anime's taste or if you agree with 4chan's taste like maybe you can find the good shows just by listening to what they tell you to watch but like if you're like me and nobody really has the same taste as you you just gotta fucking watch everything you know but recently and it's definitely because i moved in with my girlfriend and we started smoking all the time like i got into watching movies that are highly dense like I got into watching Hayao Miyazaki films especially because like one of the first things we watched together was My Neighbor Totoro and I loved that movie like I hadn't liked it before like I was not a huge fan of My Neighbor Totoro I'd seen it probably four years prior and just thought it was okay with like kind of boring and slow but like watching it with her who was really into it like for her that's like her favorite anime now and uh you know like experiencing it a different way especially while like you know in like a heightened state of mind was just a really exciting experience and it made me want to revisit like all of Miyazaki's films it made me want to revisit all of like the really lush visually stuff that I can remember and in the process I have watched like lots of shit that has turned out to be nowhere near as good looking as I remember and it really has helped me to like separate the wheat from the chaff you know but like I'm finding movies that I thought were amazing, but I haven't seen them in a long time, and I'm like, 
fuck, these are my favorites. And I'm finding new shit that I'm like blown away by. And it's because I'm seeking out a, a specific type of thing that's like, this is something that will guaranteed be a favorite of yours. Because like, Hayao Miyazaki already made some of your favorites. Ponyo's already on your favorites list, you know, like, you know you like this guy's style. You know you like the styles of some of these other movies that you're watching. Um, fucking Dead Leaves. Like, I never thought I was gonna like Dead Leaves. Like, what I had read about it, the way people described it, it had never seemed like my sense of humor. And, in fairness, I didn't even like Panty and Stocking that much when the show first came out, because, like, I wasn't really into that sort of ultra-raunchy humor, which I am now, more so. So, like, definitely there's an element of my tastes are changing here, but, like, I'm also just revisiting so much good shit and getting the chance to like have new shit break up my favorites list and like that shit is definitely happening because tonight we rewatched The Wind Rises she had never seen it I was watching it for the the first rewatch I ever did the first time I saw it was in theaters dubbed in 2013 you know so watching it or at the start of 2014 watching it again like I fucking adore that movie and I think it's super underrated and I think it has a very clear message about like the pitfalls of trying to be like a perfectionist and trying to be a like uh, a genius at something where this character he, it has such a single-minded pursuit of genius that it really destroys his life like it leads to mostly negative you know like <laughs> negative shit in his life and it it kind of feels like Miyazaki was writing a story about like the worst parts of himself and then like using Hideaki Anno's voice because he's someone else who has the same exact problems and writing a story about someone historically who was the same type of like mad genius but then like way dramatizing his story so that it's like the worst thing that could possibly come from that genius like that it led to mass pe human death and also your the love of your life dies, you know? Summer Wars. I hadn't seen Summer Wars since like 2010. And at the time I considered it one of my favorite anime movies, but like, you know, when you don't watch something for a certain amount of time and a lot of your other tastes and stuff changes, then you just kind of got to look back like with a sideways glance at everything from the past, you know? At the same time that I would have liked Summer Wars, I probably still thought like Sword of the Stranger was a really great movie. And I rewatched that recently and that movie does not hold up at all, you know? Like, lots of stuff from back then doesn't hold up, but Summer Wars is like god tier. And I would say that it's just, it's such a, an excellent celebration of like human connection. And it's exploring that through the like deepest form of human connection that there is, which is your family, you know? And it decides to explore this theme of family through a large family. and. I come from a relatively big family, and I'm sort of marrying into a big family, and as somebody who's, like, just recently been to, like, my girlfriend's, like, family events, like, seeing this huge number of people, like, who I don't know at all, but all have, like, a real storied past, and, like, each of them clearly, like, has an entire life outside of this movie, like, you can very easily tell, that, like, that these characters have a fucking story, you know? But we don't get to hear very much of that story in this movie because it's a fast-paced thrill ride. But, like, nonetheless, all of these characters are interacting with this new kid who, you know, in the context of this movie, is, like, it's a lie that he's supposed to be this girl's fiancé, but, like, everyone's treating him like he is, you know? And by the end, he is. So, like, it was super relatable for me. And, like... I also just think that the grandma is one of the most like badass, interesting, older characters ever portrayed in anime. Um, Ghost Lightning had written some great shit about her way back in the day that like was really inspiring um, for me to care about that movie. But yeah, Summer Wars is like 10 out of 10, no question. And like, does that mean it goes in my top 10? I don't know. I think I need to rewatch Kare Kano and determine like do I think that shows a 10 or not and like do I think that Log Horizon's a 10 or not because like Log Horizon's definitely getting kicked out of the top 10 at this rate like no question I already had to push it out to fit in The Wind Rises and like 
I don't know if Kare Kano or Summer Wars competes for the number 10 spot. I don't know if fucking Dead Leaves competes to get into the top 10 because like it is like the perfect showcase of why Hiroyuki Maishi like has such a beautiful sense of timing and just style and sense of humor that I appreciate so much and I really relate to his sense of humor and like his values as well. However, like that movie is very light on plot. Like the characters are kind of memes, which I like about them. They are fun meme characters, but like, you know, it's hard to say. It's hard to say if that's as good as the best, uh, you know, high school romance I've ever seen. This wasn't like as hard as this is before, you know, this is I'm having difficulty deciding what are my top 10 favorite anime, and I haven't had difficulty doing that in like some time, you know, if ever. So I'm really excited about anime right now. I'm seeing lots of good shit. You know, I saw Cat Soup for the first time, and I probably gave that like a 9. I finally watched all of the Nausicaa movie, because even though the Nausicaa manga is like one of my favorites, and I definitely think it's like a, a, almost a 10 out of 10. like. The Nazca manga is one of my favorites, but the movie I had seen, like, the first half of, like, ten years ago. And, um, all I knew about it is that it is an incomplete version of the manga, so, like, it's just automatically kind of not as good. But, like, it is a phenomenal movie except for that point, you know? Like, that is, like, a perfect adaptation of the first two volumes of the manga. There just wasn't any more of it, you know? So, like... It's kind of a shame, but yeah, it's fucking great, and so is so much of what fucking Miyazaki has done, and and what other directors have done as well. You know, I've, I've just enjoyed so much fucking shit, and uh, I can't get that from like watching current anime. You know, and I've been doing it. I'm watching the current season. Uh, with May just because we're doing the videos on the Corrupting Your Kids channel, which are kind of like nonsense videos, but people seem to be enjoying them. So, like, we're probably going to round out at least the rest of the season and try to improve the quality of those videos a little bit, like get better face cam on them and stuff like that. But, like, you know, it's watching it is, like, surreal. It, even though there is good shit on this season, like, there are a few shows that are pretty okay, but it's, like... We're also re-watching Gurren Lagann right now. I'm re-watching it, she's watching it for the first time, and she's like, this show is obviously a fucking masterpiece. Like, you know, I totally appreciate why everyone thinks this show is so great, and like, when you're re-watching Gurren Lagann, and the script writing is so good that it's like, unbelievable that this is an anime, because you're watching the current season shows and even the best shows are just kind of like okay you know they're just well made versions of things you've already seen before when you reach that level of like jadedness you can't watch the current season to find the things you're gonna like anymore like you're really gonna have to start prowling <laughs>